Hello and welcome to today's piano tutorial for the ABRSM pieces from the grade 6 piano syllabus for the exams in 2023 and 2024. So in today's tutorial I'll be talking about the A1 Prelude in C sharp mana by Stephen Heller. In my initial uh, video I shared on YouTube you have already seen that I spoke a little bit about balancing, technique, uh, pedaling and other little difficulties that might come up when learning this piece. So in today's video, I'll be sharing more tips on things like phrasing, technique for those semi-quavers. I'll also be sharing more on balancing and later in the video, I'll be sharing a few tips on that half pedal I mentioned and the bite point in the pedal. So to start with this video, I would like to just uh, just go straight into the phrasing. So that's the very first thing I want to show you. So the phrasing in here really goes, uh, is, is, is showed very clearly with the phrasing lines. Um, and so the, the first section we're going to look at is bars number one to number 14. So, so for these videos on my website, I'll try to upload sheet music with my editorial markings. So... Um, try to look on my website in the community page um, under every video I should I should uh, put it there hopefully if the technicalities allow me to do so and so I'll do share some phrasing suggestions some dynamics some fingerings and some other bits and bobs so so just look for that uh, PDF and you can download um, it's not necessarily gonna be a BRSM edition um, but it'll be addition that is no longer under copyright. So uh, let's go to the first thing and that first thing is called phrasing. And so the, the first section of the phrasing we are gonna, we're going to talk about in this piece uh, is bars 1 to 14. Now these bars are all phrased at the two bar phrases. So it goes like this. That's two bars, another two bars, another two bars, and then another two bars. Now bars 9 to 10, then 11 to 12, now 13 to 14, and then finishing. Okay, so because it's phrased in two bars at a time, what we can actually do is we can actually um, adjust the, the amount of crescendo we do towards the second bar in the two two bar phrases. And so if we look at the music, we'll notice that it's actually climbing. So it's going uh, first, uh, it goes to G sharp. Then it goes to A. So for that, we probably want to go higher and give more sound and then for G natural we probably want to do a bit less and then for the last two bars we want to be very light almost like a joke in a way and so then we do the same for bars 9 and 10 so we go then to A which goes higher it means louder and then to G natural and then very lightly like that. Okay, so this is kind of the main idea of the phrasing. Just the more, the higher it goes, um, just the more sound you want to produce. Okay, and if it goes down, we want to close the phrase and we want to get lighter. Now moving on, bars 25 to 40 is phrased in the common phrasing technique, also known as 2 plus 2 equals 4. So this is very, very popular in Chopin, Chopin's music, actually, where he's phrasing 2 plus 2 plus 4. And also in all the music that's, you know, in the classic, written in the classical music era. So what you really want to do is treat those 2 plus 2 plus 4 in a way as a statement, repetition of that statement, and then general answer. So if you think about bars 25 to 26 is two bars phrased at two bars then maybe the repetition of the same statement but a little lighter 
and then four bar phrase so you want to crescendo through the four bar phrase it's almost like you're not sure what you want to do with this and then you crescendo again two bar phrase and then crescendo four does that make sense? So I'll just do that again. So 25, 26 is two bar phrase. And we kind of get quieter because the phrase start loud. And then through the second bar, we go towards the next harmony, which is lower. So everything is in steps, look. E starts on E. Now starts on D, lighter. Now starts on C sharp, bar 29, and then you go up. So this way music becomes very, very moving, okay? And very, um, how should I say, um, lively. It, ha it speaks to us, it tells us a story, because that's the main thing, right? Uh, you want to be telling the story through the music. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, called 2 plus 2 equals 4. Basically you have 2 bars, then plus 2 bars, and that that it goes to 4 bar phrase. And that actually is repeated twice. So you have 25, 26, then 27, 28, and then 4 bar phrase goes 29 to 32. And then again the same thing, 33 to 34, 35 to 36, and then 37 goes all the way until kind of middle of bar 40. Okay, so the third kind of obvious phrasing uh, appears in bars 48 to 54. Here again, you have repetition. Uh, and when we have a repetition in phrase, we want to do something differently with each phrase, right? So here is here is how the music goes. It's 49 and 40, sorry, 48 and 49. Then 50 to 51. And then the 52 and 53, it's almost like starting in the same manner. But then instead of going down, it's actually going up. So what you could do is you could do first time a little more sound. So 48 and 49, you can do a bigger crescendo. Now 50 to 51, you can do less crescendo. And then 52 to 53, you can really go big crescendo up until the top. Yeah, like that. Right, in general, as I mentioned in my main YouTube video, uh, the phrasing in general is judged by the direction of music or the melody. Now, if the melody goes up, we crescendo. If the melody goes down, we do menendo. This sort of approach to phrasing rarely goes wrong. And if the composer wants you to do the opposite, they will indicate so, okay? So always remember the rule of thumb on phrasing. If the melody goes up, you do crescendo. If it goes down, you do menendo. Now you can also go on YouTube and check my video on phrasing where I share uh, quite a few examples actually of how this uh, type of phrasing can be uh, can be executed. Okay, so let's move on to the technique part of this video. Um, and this is where I'm gonna talk a lot about semi query passages in both the right hand and the left hand. Um, so, and actually, you know, if you practice well enough, uh, the, the, the tips that I'm about to share you, if you practice well enough, you will actually notice that uh, it's really gonna improve you a lot um, in the long term and and those passages will sound very light very quick and very crisp so the first thing you want to do um, again i'm gonna break it all in sections so the first section of the semi quaver passages goes bars 1 to 17 okay so that's literally the first page of the piece in the ABRSM book. Now, those are the following things you want to be doing when practicing this section. So first is you want to do very deep legato, very, very deep, um, almost forceful way of doing the right hand and very deep legato. So something like that.
So that was one thing and you really want to play very close to the keys and play almost from within the keys. So this will uh, this will make you to this will teach you to play very close to the keys because the faster you play in the future the closer you'll have to be to the keys. You can't play like that's crazy. You can't do that. You know, you want to be as close to the keys as possible. Almost crawling through the through the keyboard. Now, the next point is you want to do exaggerate, you want to exaggerate the phrasing. So again, deep legato, very close to the keys, uh, a lot of power coming from the fingers, and you want to exaggerate the phrasing by making a huge crescendo in the melody. Basically, that that. Now, next thing is accentuating the, the odd note. So, for example, you want to accentuate the first and the third one. Like that, right? Then you want to accentuate the second and fourth. Right? Like that. And it's going to be very difficult because that goes against the left hand because left hand is offbeat as well. So it's like a double offbeat in between the hands. The next thing you really want to do is, is try the dotted rhythms. I mean, these are tested. They've been around, you know, for many, many, many years since probably the piano was invented. Um, dotted rhythms. So you want to practice by playing one note long and another note short. So... Know, and then opposite so you want to play now what it does it actually makes you accentuate uh, different notes at different times and also you you when you're playing the short note you have to make sure that th that short note is always the same length so it can be you know, you can't play one very short and then another kind of short. You want to play them all at the same length. So if, if, if say, the semiquaver is worth, um, you know, if you on the first semiquaver you're 100 miles an hour, then on an, another semiquaver you can't do 50 miles an hour. You have to do the 100 miles an hour. So, so dotted rhythms are also going to really help you in that uh, sense. Now, another thing is the wrist. So... Again, I'm just giving you two bars of playing, but actually you can really apply the same the same technique um, in the whole page, the first page, bars 1 to 17. So the wrist is what, when you're playing this sort of passage, you want to, you want to use the wrist and help your fingers travel from note to note, because you can't really play it all from fingers. You want to do the wrist as well. So the faster you play in the future, the smaller the wrist motion be, will be. And then... Yeah. So... You see how my wrist is going towards the direction of the melody? Now, last thing I want to talk about in this particular section on the technique is the thumb, right? So you want to bring, as soon as the thumb is finished playing, you want to start bringing it over to its next position. So that's B sharp, which is there. So look, see, it's already there. It's actually there, nearly there, when I'm playing uh, B sharp. And then look, now it's traveling to the C sharp. So this way it will help you to make those uh, semiquavers a lot smoother. So again, to just recap, you want to do very deep legato. You want to exaggerate the phrasing. So if you go crescendo, you make it a huge crescendo. Right? Then you want to accentuate certain notes like one and three. And then two and four, 
right? And then dotted rhythms. And then watch out for the thumb, okay? So the same sort of thing you will be applying in bars um, 25 to um, 40, okay? So you wanna do, so this is bars 25, I'll just play right hand. So you wanna do deep legato. And then you want to exaggerate the phrasing, so crescendo huge crescendo and then huge big crescendo now and you want to play with that power so that you can also nearly hear the piano kind of you know doing that sort of sound it's like plucking and the key is hitting the bottom of the key that sort of sound if the piano uh, makes that sound as long as the piano sound, that means you're using enough power. Um, again, uh, this section bar 25 to to 40, uh, you want to accentuate certain notes like one and three, then two and four, then uh, you want to do daughter dreams. Then you want to do wrists again, so you want to help yourself with the wrist. Look, my wrist is helping to travel and I'm pushing phrase. Now here, look, it's going circular motion and then down, up. Okay, now obviously when you play really quickly, this huge motion is not gonna work. But when you play slowly, you have to make that motion big, so then as you sh as you fast as you make the tempo faster the motion will shrink and you'll just it you know at the faster tempo will be just enough to play uh, a little bit of that motion okay so moving on on to section two now so actually section two was bars 25 to 40 so let's move on to section three and this is bars 17 to 23 okay so this is the bit where left hand has to really work hard right and so first what you want to do is just practice with metronome and familiarize yourself with the fingering okay then what you want to start introducing is a little bit of rotation like that yeah, like almost you're, you have a screwdriver and you have to screw in some loose screws and you're just rocking like that. Yeah, and practice in groups of four like I just showed you. Okay, now then you probably want to practice just in blocks of notes, so that's like that. something like that um, practice staccato obviously and then watch out for the thumb so you want your thumb to go underneath the palm um, as soon as it's free to from the first note so see my thumb disappears straight away look if I play quick you'll notice that there is this little bit of motion on my left hand side left hand here in the wrist see it's like little impulses and it helps to play the uh, to play the scale down And what I'm doing, I'm creating a little bit of an accent on every first note of every group of four. Okay. Now, again, if I haven't mentioned yet, uh, 
go for the dotted rhythms very important because they will especially dotted rhythm uh, that waits on the first and the third note of the four group so group of four so first third first third because those those two notes they're actually helping to to helping for your wrist to travel to its position look first starts like that third note goes a little bit like that so this way of practice will help you to get that motion in place okay now don't forget when you're practicing slow you want to make everything very exaggerated okay so the slower you go the more exaggeration there should be and then when we speed up the exaggeration is gonna disappear because you'll have your motions you'll want the motion of this wrist to be as minimal as possible so so this is slow this is medium and then fast so that's the sort of an idea now what you want to do is you also want to start practicing hands together and you probably just want to first line up the melody notes with the left hand note so that's so that you know you have some symmetry going on because it's very it's going to be very uh, i think difficult to put it hands together in this bit because the right hand is so easy yeah and the left hand has to work so hard so you want to first put the symmetry in and and learn only those notes that line up together right then you probably want to just play the melody which is together with the full left hand and make sure that you really accentuate and make sure that you're really accentuating the first note of every group of four in the left hand together with the right hand crotchet Okay, so now let's move on on to section four of the technique in this video. Okay, and the section four actually um, goes from the bar 40 to 48 or 47. Okay, so in the main video, I shared an idea of practicing the exaggerating motion of the wrist. Um, so something like this. right so so something like that now what I, what I can tell you it's a great way of doing it but I think you want to introduce a variety of practice techniques for this piece so for example not just you don't you don't want to rely on one practice technique you want to do a few of them so for example um, the first one is probably a good way of doing the, to start with you want to practice in chords <laughs> Because every passage is actually a chord, so that's that's F sharp minor, C sharp minor first inversion. That's actually a dip, kind of a diminished, and then C sharp minor again could be diminished if we had an F, uh, and then F sharp minor. So those you want to practice in chords, and you want to practice like that. Just learning it like that in chords and then hands together. Like that. So that your hand knows uh, what it has to do, what posi position it has to be in. Like that. So the next thing is obviously the wrist. I mentioned this already in the pr primary, pr uh, primary video where you have to do this. Now, the slower you go, the bigger the motion. You really want to go round, almost like clockwise. Anti-clockwise, I mean, sorry. Okay, and so you want to increase, as you increase the tempo, you'll make the motion a little uh, smaller and smaller, so. And then. 
right? So like that. And then the next thing is uh, you want to obviously do the dotted rhythm. Now it's very good if you if you do the dotted rhythm where the long notes are first and third note because they go symmetrically um, together with the left hand quavers. Now, if you get it really clean and very symmetrically together, then playing it fast tempo will, you know, you'll make sure that uh, it'll, hel it'll help you to control the symmetry between the two hands. Otherwise, it's very easy to make it all uh, out of uh, synchron synchronicity, not synchronized well. So next thing is you want to learn um, the first three notes of every group of four. So just want to learn it in chords like this. Yeah, and go without the thumb. Uh, the thumb is always the last of the f of the group of four, so you don't want to do the thumb. You just want to do that. It's very simple. Then you want to do the lower note only. So, so the lower note means the last note of the group of four going into the first note of the group of four. So, for example, F sharp to G sharp. That's bars forty to forty one. that and again you have to make sure that the, the the notes that are symmetrically together they have to line up so right hand and left hand like that okay and then what you want to do is you want to practice um, as if the, the music is phrased in groups of four starting from the lower note so I'll just show this to you see quick uh, this will really help you to, to get this motion up okay so those are the main kind of practice techniques for for all these semi quavers um, uh, in all these in all these sections uh, and now we're gonna move on on to the balance and uh, the pedaling now the last uh, in, in the in the main video on YouTube uh, what I was talking about, I was talking about the balance um, very briefly actually, but the main technique on the balance, uh, which is going to explore this in a moment, um, but also I'll talk about a half pedal for you today, because I think the pedaling is very important in this piece. So starting with the balance, um, in general, pretty much whenever there is melody accompaniment style, okay, which is basically the entire piece. You want to play the melody very loudly while pretending to be playing the accompaniment. Now, when I say pretending, I literally mean pressing the keys down but making no sound. And so this will teach you to improve the coordination between the hands, okay? So it's like having your body a half like that. So you have left hand side and right hand side and they do completely different things right it's like having two different bodies one is doing one thing another doing is another thing okay and so you'll practice like that literally as you can see i'm not making any sound on my left hand side now if you accidentally make sound like i've just done on that c sharp or anywhere in the in the in the piece that means that that particular note or that particular chord in the left hand sticks out too much when you're performing okay and that particular note or that particular uh, chord has uh, less control so you have to really kind of concentrate and make it m make it as perfect as you can by pretending to play the left hand but not actually making sound so You see, I made the E. So 
So what it does is, again, as I said, it kind of cuts your body in half and makes your left hand and right hand completely independent. And when you start playing it normal then, your, your body or your ears will recognize that the left hand is probably too loud and you'll find it a lot easier to, to make that separation between accompaniment and melody. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about the left hand and its influence to the piece, okay? So, left hand alone has to be also kind of um, balanced within itself, okay? Because that has a melody. So if you look at the chords, so you have bass, and then you have the chord. Now, not all those chords in the whole piece, we want to balance as well so that it doesn't sound too heavy, like... We don't want the heaviness there, we want the heaviness in the top note and everything else is very light. So, because left hand also has a bit of melody going on, so look, E, 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 and then E, D sharp, E, sorry about the wrong notes there. But yeah, so that's the idea, okay? And so how to practice? Well, you wanna practice this left hand part with both of your hands. Right hand doing the chord, left hand doing the bass. So it's like this. And try to voice the chord in a way that, so that the top note of the three given notes is always the most, but the most, the loudest. And then try to copy that with your left hand. Okay, and the last thing about, about this left hand part is there is that syncopation going on in the left hand. So you really want to make the, the crotchet chord always a little bit heavier and a little bit um, deeper in the key. So it gives this ta ta. So, something like that. Something like that. Okay, so now let's go to the pedaling part of the video. And I, want, I just wanted to tell you that in the main video, I shared uh, an idea about half pedal, right? So, basically what half pedal is, is most of the students they just press pedal down right and then they go and so that what that creates is creates uh, pedaling of course it sustains the sound but this sort of pedaling can become too blurry and too muddy something like you know you don't really want that kind of muddiness in your sound so what i suggest to most students is find a biting point so biting point is it, it different pianos you know they have different biting points but on my piano uh it's kind of a little bit below halfway through point. So if we go, repeat the note and then slowly press the pedal. There we go, just about, just below halfway through. So if I go down, that's fully, and about here. So now, you can hear that the, uh, because I'm halfway through, the sound is the, the the pedal is just releasing the sound so it's just about letting the strings to resonate so now from there you can pedal a little bit up to clean the pedal and a little bit down to make the sustain pedal a little bit up to clean the pedal a little bit down to sustain so You see so the sound is a lot lighter and it's a little bit like mist of sound so it's not blurred it's nothing like what kind of C sharp minor pedal prelude where you're using full pedal it's just a half pedal technique okay now what what happens with this is as I said it gives the music um, just 
kind of transparency is very transparent sound it's not muddy especially when we have those semi queries semitone and tone scaling passages so now i'd suggest pedal for kind of nearly twice a bar where you go a half pedal and then from there you pedal up and down just cleaning the pedal based on the sound so if it's too muddy just kind of release a bit of pedal so the sound sound the trail of sound disappears if there is not enough pedal push it down and and, and catch a bit of pedal okay so what that gives is actually um, half pedal helps you to change the pedal quicker and more efficient because if you just use foot foot full pedal then to release that full pedal you have to actually go up fully to get rid of the sound and what that creates makes you work really hard and your foot goes up and down up and down like this so you really want to be now you see when i'm pedaling from halfway i'm just pedaling a little bit so the impulse is because that halfway pedal that biting point if that's your biting point you go up it's clean you go down it's sustained so you, you're just playing within that range of pedal as opposed to that okay guys so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed this video um and if you have any questions do uh, email me on the chat uh, on my website or uh best if you just leave your comments in the comment section below i hope there is one uh, here um because i'm just building this website now as i'm uh, recording so i hope that uh, the comment section will work and if it doesn't work fully just as i say email me uh text me on the chat box or find me on social media uh, facebook instagram or TikTok. also you can leave your comments in my main video on youtube uh, subscribe to my channel that really helps me to grow uh, the audience and to help more people uh, anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one